I'm saying yay because Leon was found. He was too busy down there at the beach <laughs> drink, drinking cocktails. <laughs> I have not had a cocktail yet, Bill. All right. It is, it is still early. I have uh, had plenty of water and lunch, and so I'm geared up now. <laughs> Excellent. By the way, thank you so much for, You're for joining us. Sorry, I'm running late and out of breath. That's okay. <laughs> we are on the second floor. <laughs> Did you take the elevator or the stairs? Yes. Wendy got me right in the elevator quickly. It, I felt like I was doing a television production. She was like, you're late. You're late. you got to be on camera. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, by the way, Leon Barnes, collective genius. He's not just a... Um, he didn't just work for Collective Genius as our, you're a member uh, relations. Is that your title? Yeah, the, the, the title is Director of Member Results. So Director of Membership. Make yeah. sure that members of the Collective Genius get everything that they, they signed up for. I can tell you from experience that Leon is one of the best connectors uh, that I have met. If you have a, a problem or a need uh, you go to Leon, he's going to hook you up with the person you need to talk to within this group. Now, we just had uh, Dave uh, Perchin and Brett Snodgrass on talking about uh, Generous Genius yes. for the first uh, 30 minutes of this show. Uh, because it's really important that we understand that it's not just about making money, it's about giving back. But let's talk about Collective Genius right now. Yeah, uh, thank you. But before I get into that, this man just moved his family. <laughs> Kansas. That's right. To Tampa. That's right. Uh, where he, I guess he likes the humidity. <laughs> he doesn't mind the wind because he's already from Kansas. Right. And it's windy there anyway, but at least the wind is a lot warmer, right? Yeah, it's a lot warmer in December, January, February. Uh, there are a lot of similarities. Uh, the ocean, obviously, is not one of them. But we do have a lot of lightning in Kansas, and this is the lightning capital of the U.S. Uh, we have a lot of wind, so I, there's a lot of similarities, minus the ocean and the warm weather. And the hurricanes. <laughs> yes, well, we get tornadoes, so it's a wash, right? Yeah, your, your, your tornadoes are a lot bigger than the ones you get here, that's for sure. Yes. So yes. you got settled in okay? Yeah, we've been here for going on two months. Uh, my son, I have two sons, eight and three-year-old, so I've moved with two kids. Uh, I've moved across the country several times, but never with kids, and so that made it a challenge, finding schools for the oldest and transitioning that way has been the most difficult part. Uh, obviously, during a pandemic, doesn't hurt, doesn't help it either, but um, you know, kids are resilient, and I was told that by a very wise man, and uh, I would have made the move if I didn't think it was going to be the best for their long term, not just for us as a family. It was most important for my kids that sure. this was the right move for them. I just was telling someone down at the bar that I wasn't drinking it at uh, <laughs> that, um, you know, they will, they will high five me in a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for moving us from Kansas to Florida, uh, especially in January and December. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree. Um, my, it's not much of a secret, but I would love to spend those three months in Southwest Florida. Yes. So I have been actively looking for a, a place on a canal so I can go fishing when I want. Um, it, it has been on my radar for a while. And here's one of the things that you always fail to do when you're on live camera is turn your stupid phone off. My apologies. <laughs> so I know you've done your own um, real estate investing prior to getting involved in Collective Genius. You want to talk to me about it? Sure. So I joined as a member first uh, in 2015. Wendy was a member at that time. I remember Wendy uh, was one of the first members that uh, I reached out to that helped me uh, we were looking to set up a fund. We did about 50, then 60, then 70, then it got it all the way up to 80 flips a year for the company that I was working for at that given time. I was the CEO of that company and had a, learned a lot, had a lot of fun there, built a great team, um, and then looked at, you know, can I do this on my own in the future? And did I want to work for someone else? I think a lot of people go through that in the investing world is just, I want to be my own boss, uh, but I think you said something earlier that drew me to this uh, in this role. And I am still an active investor. We'll we'll do twenty five to thirty deals this year and continuing to grow in the year and a half that we've started back doing it. 
but it's I, I always tell Jason I, I I'm so appreciative of this opportunity because I feel like I've found what I'm supposed to do I and mean, this is my calling and I really truly feel like that and that's one of the reasons we made this move not just because it's beautiful Florida but because I feel like on a daily basis I'm able to help our membership base better because I'm sitting next to Jason on a daily basis versus a Zoom call that we might do once a day. Sure. And, and so that was a strategic move behind it of why we wanted to come here. Um, and I, I will say that being a, a, a flipper and or an investor, they, this group is the best community I've ever been a part of. And that comes from also my 11 years in corporate America prior to this as a regional sales manager, I didn't have this type of community. We had a corporate community, but it was never like a giving community like this. You talked about generous genius, beyond generous genius, just what people are willing to help. Like Wendy didn't know me from Adam. We had never met before. Called her to talk about a fund uh, after my first meeting because I was told you need to talk to Wendy. And she took an hour to know me from Adam. And that's the type of community that we have here. Well, you know, you're talking about the cor corporate culture. Uh, it is completely different. Uh, corporate culture is all about how you get ahead, not helping others raise their game. And yeah. then when you help others raise their game, guess what? Your game gets raised as well uh, because it's all reciprocal. Um, every, and part of the traps that we fall into, and, and, and this is good because you guys help keep us focused as well is that when we get here, we hear all these great ideas and we want to go and implement all of them. And I, I remember being in the office with Wendy and uh, Larry Goins. And every time they came back from CG, they'd say, all right, we're changing everything. <laughs> well, we're now going to do it this way. <laughs> and, I, and I would just shake my head. Uh, understanding that you need to focus in on one thing, get good at that, and then just start adding things that make sense for your business. That's so um, spot on, Bill. It, it, we, I always have a follow-up call with our new members. We call it an onboarding call, and it's really to give all the resources. But in addition to that, to always leave that call with, do not try to do too much. You just were drinking from a fire hydrant over there. Now fill a glass of water and take that glass and then move on to the next one. Because if we see people fail within this community, it's two reasons. Number one, they haven't engaged people like yourself or sure. Wendy or the two gentlemen that you talked about before, Brett Snodgrass and Dave Parrish. And it's, these are great examples of people that are willing to always help you. If you engage them, they will help you. And the second part is try to do <laughs> laser focus on one per quarter. Yep. Because if you just do that, you will grow your business instead of stunt your growth because you're trying to do too many things. Because they're all great ideas. They're all shiny, shiny objects. But there's the one for you that makes the most sense that you need to implement it right away. Yeah, and anytime you take on a, a large task, it's that saying about how do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. <laughs> That's, right. That's, <laughs> That's right. That's the only way you're going to be able to accomplish that. And, and if you're trying to do too many things at once, you'll you'll never be good at any of them, uh, and, and that's that's always been a problem. So, uh, how do you think the uh, hybrid meeting went? Because this is the first time we did hybrid. We usually either all met together or we were all virtual. Right. Um, now I know there was a couple of hiccups at the beginning, yep. but uh, it seemed like it turned out uh, pretty well. We called those hiccups lessons uh, yeah. that we learned from. Uh, you know, so I have a broadcast journalism background. Um, I was um, in radio and television in college and right thereafter. And it reminded me of a live sporting event. We had the live event going on while trying to bring and incorporate the virtual world, which is the audience, and make sure that they feel like they're interactive with that. And the technology was there it just we had to tweak it to make sure that we got it right so i will tell you our traditionally just to give you some more background we traditionally meet for five days as a leadership team at our quarterly meetings each group comes in for three days and uh, but we're there for the entire five days and we're as you can imagine typically pretty exhausted at the end of those five days i can tell you this morning was a struggle getting up because we had two days versus the typical five but what we crammed in from 12 to 6, Tuesday 
and a Wednesday, it felt like it was two weeks worth of work because you could never take your eye off of the virtual audience. You had to make sure that they were getting the same experience as as possible as the live and making sure that everything was going smoothly. Usually I'm just focused on the audience and connecting those members in house. But so now you've got to connect the chats in the virtual and it was a fun experience one that I think I feel like the, the feedback that we got that the virtual audience got just as much when it came to connections because they were connecting with each other while we were breaking and right. connecting they were breaking and connecting on the chat as well as uh, in their room so I think overall for our first experience we leave this thinking we can do this in the future yeah yeah because there are people that for some reason just can't make it and it would be nice for them to be able to now at the same time you, you want to incentivize people to come yeah, absolutely um, absolutely but we do know that there are people that just cannot or do not want to travel anymore and i get that completely it's a small percentage because a true magic of our group is yeah. always going to be personal connection having said that if you can't make all four meetings and you plan on one being virtual to give you that option it's something that we know we can accomplish accomplish and do it at a high level and, and i want to just step back just a minute about the we, we had breakout rooms by the way um a, after we have a lesson uh, we want to try to implement that lesson or at least practice that lesson right after it's given uh, so what we'll do is we'll uh, break out into these little breakout tables and we'll practice what we just learned and how do you do that virtually and you do that uh locally as well which is really kind of cool yes. they automatically take you know let's say eight people move them into a room and then take eight more people and move them into a room all virtually and they all show up and it, it, it's awesome it really is it was, it's neat. it was fun and now i will tell you that the uh, the exercise that we did with chris voss um there for our three hours of negotiation training uh was one of those that it sounded easy on paper but to pull it off uh, and have separate rooms with our members to accomplish that uh, feat, it was it was cool. It was done well, but there's a lot of moving parts behind the scenes. And the breakouts were fun because I did a couple of them myself while being in the room, and it's fun because you get in there with room with people that you you know maybe haven't had a conversation with in a long time, and you're engaging on that particular uh, subject to get deeper into it. It was fun on both sides. Um, I, uh, um, we're, we're being hassled out here by our friends on the porch. <laughs> um, this is why, this is why we're doing this live. And by the way, Tom, you're asking where, where we are. This is beautiful, clear water, Florida. So, yes. and this is the Opal Sands hotel and it's right on the edge of the inlet that takes you into the bay. And then you've got the beautiful Gulf of Mexico right behind us, not to mention the pool and the bar. <laughs> beautiful Clearwater Beach, uh, rated usually one of the top three beaches in the United States. And again, one of the reasons that uh, it was easy to move here. Uh, <laughs> outside of the weather today, it's usually pretty nice. And we were talking about an incentive to come to the meetings. Yes. Well, this is one of the incentives. <laughs> yes, especially in December again. <laughs> we yeah. meet, uh, usually in Florida in December. You know, it's funny, and I have to I have to mention this. The plan. We we have our meetings quarterly, and one one meeting is in San Diego, and one meeting is typically in Tampa. And every year, it seemed that the Tampa meeting was right during hurricane season. That's right. And then. At the same time, every meeting that was in San Diego was during fire season. Oh. So we had a great idea mm -hmm. to swap it around so we'd <laughs> have it differently. But then COVID kind of yeah. came in and messed that up. And sure enough, as soon as we're flying in, there's a hurricane right off the coast of here. Fortunately, it just uh, got a little rain from it. And yeah, brilliant ideas um, usually work out, but sometimes you're not expecting a hundred year pandemic. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, that uh, messed things up. But the good news is, is that um, I know there's a lot of people that have been affected by this hurricane season. It has missed us a couple of times here and uh, we're getting some of the effects of, the, of that right now. 
this is my meteorologist background. We're going into now. You're yeah. a broadcast meteorologist. <laughs> See, this is how I tell people what the weather is. Look out that way. <laughs> now, you can also step out the door and do that. All right. So, um, geez, I forgot what the heck I was going to ask you. Oh, if someone is uh, a top-notch real estate investor in the, their market, uh, how would they uh, – now, I know it's a lot of – most of this is invitation, uh, but if they don't know anyone that's a current member, how would they um, get a hold of someone to see if they're a good fit for our group? It's a great question. So the first thing that they do is they go to our website, thecollectivegenius.com, thecollectivegenius.com. And on that, um, first and foremost, they're going to learn about us. Before they look at joining or applying, there are a ton of testimonials on there from great members like yourself and to see if it's a good fit before you start any of the process this has to be the right fit for the investor and the community um, and th that investor has to be able to give something back to this community and not just take having said that if you do feel like you're someone that's a high caliber investor you do you know a minimum of 50 transactions a year or have 50 doors or been an investor for a very long time there's an application. It says how CG works. You click on that button on our website um, and then you can apply. Uh, we are exclusive for territories up to three and major metros. And so there's some that are locked out, but we have a lot. We have some open markets that are still available. Um, but I will tell you this. We I personally do a consultation with every single applicant that is qualified um, and we are first and foremost not selling you on this. This has to be the right fit for you. If it is the right fit, then we can move forward. And uh, you, your annual membership includes four meetings, including a meeting like this. Uh, but the process starts with an application and a Zoom call. Let's see if this is the right fit before we move forward. We've been doing Zoom calls way before it was popular because we want to make sure we have a face-to-face -face with someone to see you know, really what their goals are and if we can help them accomplish those goals. If we can't, we'll part as friends and we'll stay in touch. Excellent. Well, I, I know that one of the things that Wendy and I harp on on every single broadcast that we do is the importance of being involved in a community of people that are um, it, basically the same culture as you, like-minded, um, e even if it's just your uh, RIA group uh, or a meetup group. But the importance is when you're a small business owner, yes, you're by yourself and you need to be in a community that's going to help you. And I tell you, it has being involved in masterminds has just lifted our game consistently. And it, it actually has made me a better learner because I was kind of stagnant for a while and it, it really got into me that I needed to. Uh, have a little better how do I want to put this um, I needed to lift my own game personally not just business wise sure. and being involved in these different mastermind groups has allowed me to continue to learn and continue to be excited about what we do we're all human beings and there are days that it's harder to get up um, more so than others and you're just looking on a daily basis to be inspired to continue to grow. And we've got a community of 150 members now uh, all across the United States that some want to scale and grow, most do, and they're A-type personalities, but some of them, they just want to protect, have some cash flow, continue to grow and you know exchange money instead of time for money. Um, and so there's a, it's a great blend within the group. And in any mastermind or local RIA, you're looking for people that inspire you to continue to grow. Because I, we were talking about this um, earlier this week. Uh, someone's grandfather, uh, they said that their grandfather's like 77 years old. He still goes out and works construction every single day because he believes that when he stops by that body in motion and that mind in motion, he'll die. Well, and that's the inspiration I think all of us as human beings sometimes need. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, when people retire, if they don't move on to their next, they do start falling behind health-wise and mentally, I believe. Uh, you can only fish and uh, play golf so often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's fun, but you need, you need um, 
I think we all need purpose. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Beyond, I, I it, whether that's real estate or whatever you do in your life, find your purpose because it's the old cliche of you'll never work a day in your life. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for I'm, having me. Sorry I, I was late. I'm sorry I had to pull you away from the beach and the cocktail bar, which he was not taking advantage of yet. Don't be sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry because you're pushing me right down to there now. <laughs> but, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.